Hello and welcome to an overview of how you can use vCenter Operations Management Suite to manage your hybrid cloud. Today's demonstration will highlight vCenter Operations Custom User Interface, which allows you to configure how you view your environment. vCenter Configuration Manager, or VCM, for configuration and compliance and patch management and vFabric Hyperic to monitor the operating system and application infrastructure across physical, virtual, or cloud environments. Hybrid clouds, where services can be delivered internally or by external service providers, are becoming more and more prevalent in today's organizations. Many customers we talk to are having their workloads pushed out into the public cloud due to cost or performance concerns. And it's becoming increasingly critical to have the ability to manage not just your own virtualized environment or private cloud, but also all the workloads that are being migrated to public clouds. VC Operations Manager, or VC Ops, with its custom user interface, allows us to do just that. The layout of the interface in VC Ops is highly configurable. There are many ways we could have set up the environment for this demonstration. We're only looking at one option for our demo today, but we think this one is a great way to show the power of what the custom user interface can do. The first tab that we have built using the custom UI is a hybrid cloud overview. This gives us a high-level view of the health and the components of all the clouds and their entities. In this view, we're actually looking at four different clouds. There are some components running in Amazon AWS, some components running in Rainpole, a VMware public cloud provider, some components running in another VMware public cloud provider, BlueLock, and then we also have our own internal virtualized environment for our company here, showing their different components. In this hybrid cloud overview, we can easily see the overall health of the environment. And where we see an issue, something other than the color green, we simply hover over any of these components to see, for example, an exchange server with very low health score, or a database server, which we'll come back to in a second, with a very low health score. And from here, we can quickly drill into any of these components to see what's really going on. There's also a widget that displays an overall cloud health score. This view gives us a high-level overview look at the overall health of each of our individual cloud environments. The problems that we can see in this view might indicate issues with individual VMs that we have running or could possibly indicate a problem with a cloud provider where we might need to contact them and ask for an explanation because we are receiving less than adequate performance for our virtualized environment. The widget below gives us a view of our application health. In this case, we have a finance exchange environment that is fairly unhealthy, down to only a health score of 24. We also have an online sales environment running in Amazon AWS, which is down to 63. This is the one we're going to drill into in more detail in this demonstration. Now, as we mentioned before, there are a number of ways that we can set up our dashboard. We could have arranged the UI so that we can double click on things and drill into them. What we've actually done here is to create four separate tabs at the top to show us our four different cloud environments. So if we know there's an issue going on with, for instance, this particular database or this particular application, all we need to do is go to the Amazon Cloud tab, and that view will give us the next level of detail that we need. Here we can see the online sales application, which appears to be the issue. It is, in fact, unhealthy, and this view will provide us a timeline of health over the last 12 hours. Looking closely at the data, we can see that around 6 a.m., things started to turn from green to yellow. And although it has fluctuated over time, it's remained relatively unhealthy ever since. We see here our online sales application is made up of two application servers, which are load balanced, two web servers, which are load balanced, and two database servers, which are supposed to be load balanced. But since they are showing different health states, we know that in fact they are not. To begin troubleshooting this problem, we can click on the Red Hat Linux Oracle database server number two and see what it's made up of. Selecting a particular component in the configuration view updates the health tree, so now we can see this particular object, this server or virtual machine, which is actually part of the Amazon Cloud, in more detail. It is also part of the online sales application, and we're gathering data for the Oracle database, the Linux operating system, and the agent itself that's doing the monitoring, in this case, Hyperic. By mousing over the Oracle database in question, we can see that its health is very low, and it actually has seven different KPI breaches. When we click on the database, the metric graph at the bottom will bring up the most important metrics for us, in this case, our KPIs, and we can see that they're being monitored by the Hyperic agent. 
Now, KPIs are completely up to the user to determine. We could have left it without any KPIs, and the system would work just fine. It is a good practice, however, to use KPIs to do things like drive the health faster. In other words, when a KPI breaches, it will actually cause the health to decrease and degrade faster than a normal metric, drawing attention to the problem more quickly. We can also use KPIs to create alerts. So if there is something that is a very critical KPI, if that ever breaches or goes beyond or below a specific threshold that we set, we can receive a custom alert for that. Now turning our attention back to the metric graph, we see things are going pretty well until around 7 a.m. when things started to take a turn for the worse for the CPU time recursive per minute. And it was not a one-time problem. It's been almost constantly in the red ever since. VCOps determines what is red for a metric if it is outside of its normal band. This gray area here is a dynamic threshold that is automatically calculated as it's collecting this data. The band will show us what is considered normal during the same time of day during the same day of the week. And in looking at our performance metrics here, we can see that we are well above normal. Now let's scroll up to look at another metric, CPU total time per minute. Again, at the same point in time around 7 a.m., we see a huge spike. And as we scroll up again, we see the same thing with memory. In this case, the session memory, PGA memory for Oracle. And again, around 7 a.m., a huge spike, and everything has been out of the normal range ever since. Now, at this point, we can be fairly sure we know the culprit. In this case, it's the Oracle database that's the issue. Now, to find out exactly what could be wrong, let's go down to the next level and click on the Metric Drill Down tab to see exactly what's going on with this Oracle database and its supposedly load-balanced partner. On the Metric Drill Down tab, we see a list of every single resource in the environment. To find the specific resource we want to examine, we can search for Oracle, and that will bring up the two Oracle databases. As we select Oracle Database 2, it will populate the Metric Selector widget down below so we can see a comprehensive list of every metric that is being collected from the Hyperic agents. As you can see, there are a number of different icons here. A yellow icon means that this particular metric, here block changes per minute, is outside of its normal band. It's acting abnormally. Icons that are blue denote a metric that is within its normal band. And the last one is the KPI metric, which can be blue or yellow, depending if it is inside or outside of its band. So now looking at the metrics, we can see a number of different icons that are yellow and showing abnormalities. A very useful feature of VCOps is to be able to compare the two resources side by side. So to do that, let's select the other Oracle database. So we've got Oracle 1 and Oracle 2 highlighted, and now we can use the multi-select button. This selection will populate the metric selector widget with all of the metrics that these two have in common. We also see that the abnormal metrics window has been updated with a short list of metrics that VCOps has, based on its learned experience of monitoring our environment, suggests that we should be looking at. We'll begin with user commits per minute, which is on that list. As we select that from the metric selector, it populates the metric graph with both the Oracle 1 and Oracle 2 user commits per minute metrics. And looking at the data, it's hard to see any correlation, but we can use the Merge Graph button to allow us to actually compare these two metrics together directly, one on top of the other. In the merged graph, the blue is Oracle 1, the green is Oracle 2. Here it's much easier to see that right around 7 a.m., the two databases stopped being in sync. In other words, it appears that we have two databases that up until 7 a.m. were sharing the load equally, then a huge increase came along, and for some reason, Oracle 1 is no longer getting any of that new load, and Oracle 2 is getting stuck with everything. So let's go ahead and clear that graph and check a different metric, physical writes per minute, which is also included on the list above. Here we see the same thing. Right around 7 a.m., the sharing seems to have stopped. We had a huge increase in workload in the number of writes per minute, and Oracle 2 seems to have gotten stuck with the majority of that workload. We can also check our KPIs. As you remember, on the other screen we had KPIs that we had set aside. So let's go ahead and look at some of those. In this case, let's look at PGA memory. Once again, it's the same telltale sign. The memory between the two databases seems to be equal, and then at 7 a.m., a huge increase only on Oracle 2. So thanks to the VC Operations Management Suite, we've been able to quickly see an overview of our entire hybrid cloud. 
we were able to quickly find an entity and an application that were running poorly, and we were able to drill down to the cloud level and find out what particular component of this application and what particular component of the VM was running poorly. In this case, we were able to quickly determine it was a database problem, and by comparing the two databases together, we were able to pinpoint exactly when that problem began. We now have enough information to pick up the phone, call our database administrator, and tell him exactly what we are seeing. Things were going fine until about 7 a.m., then there was a huge spike, and that spike is not being shared between the two databases. Please drill down into those databases and fix what's wrong. Here are the metrics that I'm seeing that are showing me that problem. So we've been able to successfully deal with a health issue and a performance issue in a hybrid cloud, specifically in a public cloud environment in this case. But there is still more work to do. We need to make sure that those workloads that are pushed out into the hybrid cloud and into the public clouds are running safely, securely, and being patched properly. To do that, let's turn our attention to vCenter Configuration Manager, or VCM. As we toggle over to VCM, we can see all the components of our Amazon cloud, the components of our BlueLock cloud, and the components of our internal private cloud, etc. VCM can deal with all of these different components of our hybrid cloud and provide us the functionality needed to ensure compliance, security, and patching. So let's begin with compliance. VCM can come with a number of compliance templates for many standards including PCI, HIPAA, SOX, etc. Here we have taken an amalgamation of those different templates and built our own hybrid cloud baseline template. And that's what we're reporting against here. Now based on that custom template, we can see the severity of the rules across the top and the importance of the assets in our environment along the other axis. This brings our attention to this upper left-hand quadrant where we can see our most critical rules on our most important VMs. In this case, we see that 146 of those rules passed, but 117 of them failed. Now, let's look at a different type of view in the environment, which breaks things down by the actual rules and conditions themselves. This view allows us to see what percentage we are compliant or not compliant and which of our baselines are we meeting or not meeting. To drill down further, let's go ahead and look at all of the machines and all of the rules that failed the test. This is a list of all the different rules that we have running. This includes firewall rules, service rules, security parameter rules, etc. And as we scroll down further, you'll notice that this is a merged list of rules that includes rules for Windows, Linux, and Unix all running in the same template. Now let's open up this Linux rule and we'll see that there are four machines running in Amazon that do not have the correct cryptography or security protocol set for the root login. We can also look at this particular Windows rule. Here we've got a number of machines running in Amazon, BlueLock, RainPole, as well as our private cloud that are allowing ICMP redirects for OSP routes. That's not advised, it's not good practice, in fact it's very dangerous. So from within VCM we can select all of these machines right-click, and enforce this rule. What that means is that VCM will immediately go out to all of those machines, both those running in our private cloud and those in public clouds, and fix them just with a simple click. We can immediately remediate the situation, bringing things back into alignment and making sure that we are as secure as possible. Now that's just one example of how we can use our own best practices or the templates from VCM to very quickly bring our environment into compliance and make sure things are running as securely as possible. Now let's look at something else we have to worry about in a hybrid environment, patching. As with compliance, we need to make sure that things are patched correctly in our private cloud, in our virtual environment, and also in the workloads out there in public clouds. And again, we'll turn to VCM for help. Let's begin by looking at a simple patch assessment. In this case, looking at both critical and important Windows patches over a specific time frame. As before, our eyes are drawn to this upper left-hand corner where we have critical patches that need to be installed on vital components in our environment. These could be components like major databases or business critical applications. Here we are looking at 106 patches that have already been installed, 21 that are definitely needed, and 65 that simply aren't necessary because the components those patches are associated with are not installed in our environment. Now as we scroll down, we see the overall patch assessment. Here we can see all of the patches that have not been applied, or in other words, all the components that still need to be patched. Let's click on that. This screen shows a list of all the different patches that are necessary in our environment based on the assessment that we just ran. 
You can see we have an Adobe patch, a number of Java updates, and a whole bunch of Microsoft bulletins that need to be deployed in our environment. As we open a patch, we see a list of all the machines that require this particular patch. There are some running in Amazon, a couple running in BlueLock, and there are even some running in our own private cloud environment. As with compliance enforcement, a time-saving feature of VCM is the ability to simply highlight all of the machines, right-click, and then deploy. From here, VCM will send those patches out, update all of these machines, bringing them back into patch compliance, all from one place, regardless of whether it's a public cloud or a private cloud, saving us time and money while also making our hybrid cloud environment safer and more secure. So to recap, we've seen how we can customize the user interface of VC Operations Management Suite to quickly find problems in a hybrid cloud environment and then pinpoint important details so we can contact the responsible parties with the proper information. We've also seen how we can use VCM to enforce compliance, ensure best practices, automatically remediate problems, and handle patching across the entire environment to make sure that we are always in compliance and secure. For more information about the VC Operations Management Suite, please visit VMware.com. Thank you.